All right, this is going to be the video notes for section 7.2, Properties of Parallelograms. You have two learning targets. You need to understand how to determine if a quadrilateral is actually a parallelogram based on four rules that we're going to learn. And then you also need to be able to solve equations and find missing measures using those four rules. Okay? After notes, you will have three different activities or worksheets that you need to finish. Okay, so starting off with a basic parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two sets of opposite sides that are parallel. That is why where it gets its name, parallel. Okay, and it's only supposed to have one R. It's okay. All right, so that means the top is parallel to the bottom, so I make my little triangles. And then the left is parallel to the right. And if you notice, I, I made two triangles for the left and right because it's different than the ones on the top and bottom. Okay? All right, so this is a parallelogram, and there's four rules we're going to learn about it. Rule number one is that opposite sides are congruent. So based on our picture, that tells me here that AB, the top, is congruent to the bottom, which is DC. And it also tells me that the left, AD, is congruent to the right, BC. Now, sometimes you're going to have problems with numbers. If I tell you that the left is 8, that means that the right is 8. If I tell you the top is 17, then that means the bottom is 17. So you just have to remember that opposite angles are, um, op opposite sides are congruent. Okay, rule number two is that opposite angles are congruent, which I kind of just said. Can't spell today. So on this picture up here, that tells me that angle A is congruent to angle C. And it also tells me that angle D is congruent to angle B. So if I gave you that this angle was 75 degrees, then this angle over here was 75 degrees. Okay. So opposite angles are congruent. The next rule is adjacent angles. Adjacent angles are supplementary. So those are a couple words that we got to review. Those are old vocabularies. Remember, adjacent means next to each other next to each other and supplementary means 180 so this one has a lot of opportunities so I know that angle D plus angle C because those are adjacent is equal to 180 but I also have another angle next to D I also have angle A so I can say angle D plus angle A is 180 for angle B, the opposite one, I could say angle B plus angle C is 180. But I can also say angle B plus angle A is 180. So a picture what that would look like is that if this is 100, then this one next to it is 80. And obviously I think I mixed those up, but that's okay because pictures are not drawn to scale. They're there for our reference. All right, last thing that happens with parallelograms, and then I'll give you a second to pause and copy everything down if you're falling behind. Um, diagonals bisect each other. And remember, bisect means to cut in half. So we're going to draw diagonals, but I'm going to do dotted line diagonals because I don't want it to get confusing. But there's one diagonal from A to C, not exactly straight, but you get the idea. And here's another diagonal from D to B. Where they intersect, it cuts the lines in half. So that tells me A to E is the same as E to C. So A to E is congruent to E to C. And then it also tells me that D to E is equal to E to B. Okay. 
So on this problem, if I drew my diagonals, if this one was 8, then I knew this one over here was 8. If the whole thing was 10, then I knew each half was 5. Okay, so I'm going to put the Dora pause on so you can get caught up. Make sure that you write everything down, and then we'll go on to the next part. Okay, so what we have now is just a bunch of uh, examples, and the examples are based on the four rules. Rule number one, opposite sides are equal. Rule number two, opposite angles are equal. Rule number three, adjacent angles equal 180. And rule number four, diagonal angles bisect each other. Okay, so let's look at the first one. What you should recognize right away is you should be able to find that y is 50 because those are opposite. And then what you could do is you could say, oh, 50 is next to z, or 50 is next to x. Either way, they're next to each other. So 50 plus z equals 180, because adjacent angles add up to 180. So that tells me that z is 130, which is opposite of x, so x is also 130. Okay. For b, again, I'm going to look at the first thing across from each other. Across from each other is these. So my first equation can be 2y minus 10 equals 48. So 2y equals 58. So y is 29. So there's one answer. For the x equation, x plus 8 is opposite 15. Well, opposite sides are equal. So that equation is going to be x plus 8 equals 15. So x equals 7. Let's look at this one up here, 3w. Well, 3w is opposite 21. Opposite sides are equal based on rule number 1. So 3w equals 21, so w equals 7. And so the last one I need to find is the z. And z is probably the hardest equation, but I don't even think it's that bad. If you look at z, the 3z plus 9, it is adjacent to 48. And based on rule number three, adjacent angles are supplementary, which means they add up to 180. So it'll be 48 plus 3z plus 9 is 180. I'm going to go ahead and combine my terms by doing 48 plus 9, which gives me 57 plus 3z is 180. I'm going to subtract 180 from the 57, and I get 3z is 123. Divide by 3, and I get 41. So x is 7, w is 7, y is 29, and z is 41. Okay? So it was based on the rules, and all the rules were opposites were equal. Things next to each other or angles next to each other made 180. All right, so if we look at c, c is dealing with diagonals. And this is rule number 4 that says diagonals bisect each other. So that tells me that this segment is equal to this segment because it was bisected, it was cut in half. So there's my first equation, x minus 3 equals 5. Add 3 to both sides, so x is 8. Okay? And then the next one right here, these are equal because they're bisected. So 2y plus 8 equals y plus 12 minus y on both sides. So I get y plus 8 is 12. Subtract 8 and y is 4. So the first problem, problem A, dealt with angles. The second problem dealt with angles and sides. And the third problem, C, dealt with, uh, dealt with diagonals. Okay, so I'm going to put the Dora pause on there because I went kind of fast, and maybe you can copy that down now. <coughs> okay, so now that you've got those down, why don't you try D, okay? There's some numbers that you should be able to find. You should also recognize that these are two different triangles, so there's a hint that might help you. All right, so I know my opposite angle is 104, and if I cover up this triangle, if you notice, the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So 104 plus 32 
plus w equals 180. So I add those up, 104 plus 32, subtract from 180, so w is 44. Okay, so what you need to realize for this problem, and you'll see a lot of these, so you're going to get used to this, is that this angle w is this angle on parallel lines, and the angle z is here. And I'm hoping you recognize that these are alternate interior angles, which are equal. So if W is 44, then Z is 44. And then X is the same idea. It's alternate interior with 32, so this is 32. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to try E. Okay, um, this arc represents the whole angles 120. We don't know what each one is, but why don't you go ahead and see what numbers you can fill in. This one's as tricky as it's going to get, so I'm putting the door of pause there. Okay, well, I think we need to follow off with this rule here that alternate sides are equal, right? So if this one's 23, then this one over here is 23. If this one's 50, then this one here is 50. Okay, I'm going to zoom in because that's kind of hard to see. Do you see that 50 now? Okay, well, I know that these two make 180. Or not 180, they make 120. So I can do 120 minus 50, which is 70. So this one's 70, which means this one's over here is 70. Now, if you notice, you should see some triangles. You should actually see four triangles, the top, the left, the bottom, and the right. The one on the right, I have enough information to find this angle because the three angles inside this triangle right here add up to 180. So 23 plus 70 is 93. And then I'm going to subtract that from 180, which is 87. So if this one's 87, this one's 87 because they're vertical angles. Now the next thing you should be able to see, you should recognize it say, hey, this makes a line. And the measure of a line is 180. So I could do 180 minus 87, and that's 93. So this one's 93, so this one's 93. Well, on the bottom, the three angles add up to 180. So 93 plus 50, and then subtract from 180. So that tells me that this has to be 37. Well, if this is 37, this one's 37 because they're alternate interior. So what you should recognize is that alternate interior equal, so 70 and 70 on the other side, 50 and 50, 37, 37, 23, 23. To find one of the angles in the inside, I had to do a triangle, and the three angles of a triangle up to 180. And then I had vertical angles, and then I knew that angles made a line. So there's a lot of little rules that you should already be familiar with and a couple that are new. Okay? So go ahead and make sure you get this copied down and just go through this process of finding one at a time and remembering to look at the four different rules. Rule number one, opposite sides are equal. Rule number two, opposite angles are equal. Rule number three, consecutive angles or adjacent angles are 180 and then rule number four that the diagonals bisect each other.